Hi everyone, in this recording we're going to be discussing different kinds of visual marks that you can make using ggplot2. Remember, ggplot2 is not like a drop-down kind of visualization package. It doesn't just say, you know, select bar chart, select scatterplot. Instead, there are all these different geom layers. Each kind of layer encodes, or represents, creates a certain kind of mark. And then you can compose them in very complicated ways to make custom visualizations. In our first lecture, we saw how you can make point layers and you saw how you can make text layers, but there are actually quite a wide variety of encodings that are there. So let's look at a few examples. We'll be working with this Gapminder dataset. It's a dataset of different properties of countries, uh, health uh, indicators all over time. The very first layer we're going to look at is the geom point layer. So we, this is the refresher, something that we had seen before. What is the encoding? It's taking the fertility cluster columns, encoding them in, as position, and it's also encoding uh, the shape. So everything on the same y value is getting the same shape. What you can see, you can see uh, kind of fertility is sort of clustered according to this y variable. It makes sense cluster is actually a region information. Okay, so that's a refresher, geom point. What about if we want to make rectangles instead of circles? Or uh, representing a 1D continuous variable against a 1D nominal variable. It makes sense to use a bar chart. In ggplot, that's done using geom call. Here, on the x value is encoding the country, the y value is encoding the population. So this is a technically correct plot, but it's not very good. The most obvious thing that's not very good is that you cannot tell what country is which. All the labels are overlapping. How can we fix this? One very simple trick is just to rotate the plot. Instead of country, population, I'm using population on the x-axis, it's the length of the bar country along the wall. I've also cleaned it up a little bit, getting rid of some of those grid lines and getting rid of all the tick marks. This is okay, but we can make it even better. The main idea here is that in this plot, all the countries are sorted alphabetically, but that's not a very meaningful kind of comparison, right? It's useful if you just want to look up the country, if you know the name and you want to look it up, it's good to have things alphabetically, but if you are more interested in what are the most populous, what are the least populous countries, then it's much more useful to have it sorted by the, the lengths of these bars. Right? It's kind of almost impossible to tell, especially for some of these low populations, like is this country more populous than this country? You can't tell from this bar. So the way we accomplish that, we use this reorder function. Here I've reordered all the countries according to their population. I've gone ahead and also filled it in by cluster. So you can now tell that blue is Asia, uh, or East Asia, red is South Asia. These are all different, uh, different regions. OK, a bit better, mm -hmm. but you can improve even further. So what are some things that we can do better? This is not a very useful label. Actually, none of these labels are that meaningful. I get bothered a little bit by this kind of large gap between the label name and the bar. Right. Um, there's also these little gaps, and I, I generally want to remove them. So again, just like in our first plot, population in scientific notation is kind of unusual. And I'll also I'll customize the color scheme. So it looks like a lot more lines, but it's actually conceptually not that much more complicated. What have I done here? This is just a vector containing different color names. These are, the name for this is hex colors. Um, the width attribute here is getting the bars to exactly touch one another, so there's no little gap. I've removed the, the long gap between the name and the bar by using this expand argument within my scale. And so it's saying scale, don't expand, um, allow some extra gap on the y values, but don't provide any gap 
on the X. I've told it to use kind of SI labels, so that's going to be in millions now, rather than scientific notation. I've given it the colors from here, and I've given more meaningful labels using the labs connector. So lots of small changes, but it now looks a bit more professional. OK, enough for the bar chart. Let's look at different kinds of visual marks. A bar is encoding one continuous variable. Sometimes we might have two, right? What can we do? It's natural to use something called a segment mark. So what I'm doing here is I'm showing the range, uh, the minimum to the maximum life expectancy within each, uh, each region of countries. So same kind of customizations as above, except now in my encoding, I have here's x is the minimum life. The y is the group of countries, the cluster. But I now have this new set of encodings called x end and y end. x end is saying from where to, where does it get the maximum life. y end I set equal to the original y start, so that it's just horizontal bars, but you could actually make them taller if you wanted. Okay. I've also done a little trick here where I took the x limit and I set the bottom to be zero. I did this because by default, it's otherwise going to just draw the frame from about 40 to 82. I actually want to think about age as going from zero up. So it's useful to have it starting at zero there. OK, so that's sparse. Sometimes we want to compare change. Right? So far, we've only been looking at one time point. Now we're going to look at the Gapminder data set across many time points. Whenever we want to compare change, it's very natural to consider lines. When you look at lines, we very naturally look at change. So here I'm showing fertility over time. I'm coloring them in by the region. Notice I've also passed in this argument called group. It's worth, if you're following along on code, it's worth trying to remove this, this argument and see what kind of plot you get. You'll notice that it's going to try uh, linking every, within every country group, it's going to try having kind of the lines jumping up and down and trying to meet every single country at each year. It's hard to explain, but if you try running it, you'll understand what I mean. Uh, it's a very useful trick. Whenever you're getting kind of strange line plots, remember to group by, you know, if you want all of the points for a certain variable to be on the same line, Pass that in through the group argument. OK, so saw so bar marks, we saw line marks. Sometimes we want both an, an amount and change. In that case, it's natural to use an area mark. This is done using geom area. So what I'm showing here is how the total population for each group of countries is changing over time. Right, so. Yeah, it, it draws your attention both to the totals and also how they're changing. Okay. And just like in bar marks, we generalize from bar marks to segment marks. We have an analogy from area marks, geom area to geom ribbon. So it's taking each of these, what had been just kind of stacked areas, and it's having a, a minimum and a maximum for each group. So that's what I've done here. In the same way that we had x min, uh, or we had x, x end, y, y end for the segment marks, we have uh, y min, y max for the ribbon plot. 